14 things to do and four not to do in Bali, Indonesia travel guide. Bali is known for its pristine beaches, sacred temples, green rice fields, traditional culture, and art. Bali offers a wide variety of activities for visitors from nature hikes and scuba diving to yoga classes and cultural excursions. Among the most popular attractions are Tana Lot Temple, a sea temple located on a rocky island, Uluwatu Temple located on a cliff overlooking the sea, and Besek Temple, the largest temple in Bali. Also, Bali is famous for its beaches like Kuta, Seminyak, and Nusa Dua. There are also many traditional markets where you can buy souvenirs and art objects, as well as many restaurants and bars serving local and international cuisine. 1. Mangjangan Island Mangjangan Island is a must if you are in Bali, a small and uninhabited island located a few kilometers off the coast of Bali. Its beauty makes it one of the must-see spots. To reach Manjingan Island, you need to take a boat at Labuhan Lalang in North Bali and book a guide for the park, which will cost you around IDR 350,000 for the day. Since it's a national park, you also need to purchase a permit at a variable cost. Manjingan Beach is the first thing you must visit once on the island. Pristine blue water, tranquility, and in spring, you may encounter deer swimming in the sea. Manjingan Island is famous for its marine life, and for this reason, we recommend that you equip yourself with a mask and snorkel to give yourself a truly unique show. 2. Tagalalang Rice Terraces The Tagalalang Rice Terrace is one of the most beautiful places to visit in Bali and has also been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The terrace is absolutely stunning, and despite being a tourist attraction, the plots of land and rice fields still remain intact, and the locals still work with the same techniques they have used for centuries. The best time to see the green Tegalalang rice terrace is in the following months, March, April, September, October. On site, you can eat at the famous Padi restaurant. 3. Ubud Monkey Forest Ubud Monkey Forest is in fact one of Bali's main attractions. It is located in the village of Padangtegal, very close to Ubud and is currently home to around 750 monkeys. In the forest, you can get close to the monkeys and this can also cause problems as the monkey's behavior can be unpredictable and even aggressive. This means that a visit to the Ubud monkey forest shouldn't be considered pure entertainment and taken lightly. It is always good to follow the recommendations on the signs with the wording monkey forest tips placed everywhere in the forest. Four. Trekking on Mount Bator Trekking Mount Bator is an experience that every serious traveler should have when in Bali. Mount Bator can be reached, if you are a hiker in good physical shape, in about two hours. The climb is tackled by almost everyone in the morning before sunset. This is because it offers an incredible view at sunrise, being a perfect morning workout, or if you're interested in photography, an excellent place for photos. Remember, the sun sets from 6 to 6.30 at any time of the year due to Bali's proximity to the equator. Part of the Mount Bator caldera is occupied by Danau Bator, the largest volcanic lake in Bali. Trekking up Mount Bator is possible with or without a guide, so you don't have to book a tour, as many will lead you to believe, once you get there. The most popular, and crowded, hiking trail starts from Toya Bunka village. But if you want to experience the hike without feeling the pressure of tour operators, guided tours, and people, then we recommend starting from Pura Jari. This second trail is rough and more difficult, requires a certain level of fitness, but will leave you extremely satisfied. 5. Klungkung, Semarapura. Officially called Semarapura, but commonly known by its traditional name, Klungkung, this district capital is home to the historic Puri Agung Semarapura, Klungkung Palace, a must see relic. Once the center of Bali's most important kingdom, the city retains the palace complex and a few temples from its royal past and has a bustling market. Its history is very troubled. After the assault by the Dutch, little has remained of its original building, including the Court of Justice, which has one of the most interesting elements in the ceiling restored several times. On some panels, there are scenes of battles with demons. 6. Sekumpul Waterfall Located in the northern part of the island, Sekumpul Waterfall is actually a collection of seven different waterfalls all in the same place. The path to the waterfall is very well signposted from the parking lot and it is possible to make various excursions in the area. If you are a lover of trekking, you must necessarily be accompanied by a guide to visit the area. 
The aim is, they say, to avoid problems and above all to help the local economy. We leave the judgment to you. 7. Nusa Lembogan A small island about 12 square kilometers, not far from Bali, which tourism has not yet fully known. The ferries leave from Sanur. Here, you can relax on paradisiacal beaches bordered by tall and luxuriant palm trees, go snorkeling, explore the seabed, or simply walk, trying to discover the beauties of this gem at everyday life still made up of very strong traditions and shared habits. It is also a paradise for surfers and divers. In some cases, you can even come across turtles while you are relaxing in the sun. Among the beaches not to be missed are Mushroom Bay with soft white sand and Sunset Beach, inimitable at sunset. On the island, there will be local craft shops and waterfront restaurants where you can enjoy a tasty break with typical traditional dishes. 8. Kintamani Region The beautiful Kintamani Region is far from the chaos you can find in Ubud and Kuta and is really worth a visit. It is the area where Mount Batur is located and where the amazing Lake Batur rests in the active caldera. In the area, you can also find the natural hot springs of Batur, created by volcanic activity. Though people usually tend to visit the region just for a day trip, we recommend spending a few days here to enjoy its beauty. 9. Nusa Penida If your dream is to swim with manta rays, head to Nusa Penida and enjoy one of the many tours offered in the area. The water is so clear that manta rays are used to swimming in the area and are not even afraid of humans, if humans behave properly. There is no specific manta season in Bali, although the best time to snorkel with manta rays in Bali is said to be between May and November. But at the same time, there is never a guarantee that you will see them. 10. Diving in Padang Bai Padang Bai is the place to dive in Bali and there are several spots in this area where you can go, either alone or with an instructor. The Blue Lagoon is probably the most famous due to its two coral reefs that drop quite a bit while Jetty is where you need to go if you want to see the absolute most amazing fish and marine plants. These two sites are perfect for both beginners and experienced divers, while Ferry Channel is only suitable for experienced divers as it starts very deep straight away. If you want to experience something unique, immerse yourself in the Turtle Bay area. The name says it all, the experience is simply amazing. 11. Tana Lot Temple Tana Lot Temple is one of the most important monuments in Bali, especially at sunset when people gather to perform the ritual and try to take pictures. The best thing about Tana Lot is that it can only be visited at certain times due to their nature. At high tide, the waves cover the walkway, making it impossible to cross, while at low tide, you can go to the other side, visit the temple, and sip the water from the fountains, considered sacred. After centuries of erosion by waves and salt air, Tana Lot faced a constant threat of decay a few years ago, and in the 1980s, the government put into action a plan to renovate the site with help from the Japanese government. Today, one-third of the rock is man-made. 12. Surfing in Kuta It doesn't matter if you are a pro or a beginner, Bali is considered one of the hottest areas for surfing, and the Kuta area specifically is one of the most loved places. Kuta Beach is loved by beginners for its short waves. Its sister beach, Lejian, is more suited and loved by intermediate to advanced surfers. You can book surf lessons at one of the many schools located in the area. 13. Besaki Temple Besaki Temple is the largest Hindu temple complex in Bali and survived a volcano eruption in 1963 despite its location on the slopes of Mount Agung. Set among rice fields, mountains, and hills, Besaki Temple is visually stunning. A long staircase takes visitors and locals inside the three temples located within the complex and representing the Hindu trinity. 14. The Edge The Edge is a dream location in Bali and is, of course, not easily affordable. But if you have the chance, we recommend treating yourself to at least one night here to let yourself be pampered and have a truly unique experience. It is a luxurious hotel consisting of four villas, located 150 meters above the Indian Ocean. Each villa comes with an amazing amount of services, including butler services, private pools, and incredible views of the Indian Ocean. The main reason the Edge is so popular is its suspended glass bottom pool with views of the cliff below. The good news is, you don't have to be a guest to access the pool, because the resort also has a bar and lounge that's open to the public. 
Four warnings. One, do not drink water from the taps. The first suggestion is not to drink water from the taps, but prefer only bottled water. Even in restaurants, water that comes down from the pipes is often served. It is good to always have a sealed bottle with you. This is because the local water network is not equipped with systems with special filters that make it pure and could contain germs and bacteria. In any case, even if it does not involve stomach problems, however possible, it does not contain the right amount of minerals for the body. It is absolutely the case to buy packaged water, possibly with certified brands. 2. Do not enter temples with shoes. As anticipated, Bali is the Hindu province par excellence for which its territory is dotted with numerous temples. It will be interesting to visit them, but to do so, it is necessary to enter the sacred places without shoes. It is a gesture of respect towards the local inhabitants who could feel offended by doing the opposite. Another taboo is linked to entering the temple if you have open wounds. The suggestion in this case is to stay outside so as not to attract the worried looks of the local population. 3. Do not enter temples scantily dressed. Both men and women must enter the temples in decent attire. Skimpy clothes that leave many parts of the body uncovered are not ideal for visiting temples, mosques, and churches, as in the rest of the world. The advice is to wear a sarong, a sort of large dress that covers both the body and the feet. When visiting a mosque, women should wear a head covering. 4. Don't give your left hand to give or accept something. The left hand is not considered equal to the right in Bali, but a dirty part of the body. Even if you are left-handed, remember to always give the right to receive something or to say hello. The Balinese use the right hand for all important things, both for eating and for other activities. 